welcome to another video. I am joined by Lauren from Hello. Fiction Tea on Instagram and I am Beth from Books Nest on YouTube and Instagram but you know that because hopefully you subscribe to my channel already. Hi. We're going to be doing a celebratory video today because a couple of months or a month or two ago I hit 10k on YouTube. Yay! Yay! Congratulations! Yay! And I said I would do a Q&A video and I just haven't whatever reason got around to doing one so I thought it'd be fun to do one whilst Lauren was here we put some question boxes up on Instagram we asked you guys to submit questions either for one both or none of us because yeah. <laughs> someone submitted one for my plants yeah someone um, submitted <laughs> one for one of Beth's fake plants even though all her plants are pretty much real which yeah, is <laughs> they're real plants so yeah we're gonna go through the questions we're gonna kind of do it rapid fire because we're filming this just before we need to leave to go to the airport yes we're cutting a bit fine but it's okay Lauren's leaving today so yeah we'll quick we're going home Scotland I'm coming home to you <laughs> So yeah, rapid fire questions. Do drop us down any more below if you wanted to though and we can maybe do like one on Instagram live or something if we've got some extra ones. But let's jump into the questions. So the first question I have received is best board games to play with friends. I am a nerd and I like Trivial Pursuit. That is my favorite board game. So I would say Trivial Pursuit. Uh, I don't know if any of you all know this, but I enjoy the game of life and it's probably because I'm pretty good at it. Somehow I'm really, really good at it um, and Cluedo? Oh, Cluedo I enjoy. I don't like Cluedo. Game of Life I loved as a child and then since playing it as an adult I'm like, no, I, I find it so boring as an adult, but I, like I used to love it. When I got a really good career I was like, yes! <laughs> I'm going somewhere in life. So the next question is one that is for me, but Lauren's had a question similar, vaguely related to this topic. How did you get started on YouTube? I love you and your content. Thank you so much. Uh, to start with, I started in 2016 and did it for about a year or two and then just kind of petered out. I don't really know why, but I wasn't enjoying it as much as I do now. I absolutely love it now. And I think now I've kind of managed what kind of content I want to create, what I want to talk about. So I started it up again during lockdown, right at the start of lockdown in 2020. I did a degree in film production, so I've always liked the idea of creating videos and continuing what I enjoyed about doing that degree. So this has kind of enabled me to do that. So yeah, I started it in 2016. Didn't do it for a while in between and then started back up, thank you to lockdown in 2020. But the reason this is related is because a lot of questions we've been getting generally over the last few weeks is does Lauren have a YouTube channel? A big whopping no. <laughs> she does not. And are you going to create a YouTube channel? No, sorry. I mean, I'm, I might in the near future, like, um, basically live in situations and stuff like that. I still live at home, it would be really hard. And honestly, I find it hard enough keeping up with my Instagram, so YouTube on top of that would just be too difficult. I applaud Beth for managing to balance out like a third friggin' job, but like, I, right now it's just not for me, so sorry. You'll just have to get sneak peeks of me in lives and stuff like that. Yeah. And maybe in future YouTube videos for me. Maybe, yeah, maybe. The next question, and this has been asked so many times in different variations, is how did we meet and how long have we been friends and were we friends before we met online or did we meet online, basically? I kidnapped Beth. That is how it happened. It is, yeah, that's it. So we worked this out last night that we physically met for the first time in 2018 at Yalk, which is the Young Adult Literature Convention in London, every July. So that's when we first physically met, but we had spoken online before then. So no, we weren't friends like before we met each other in the book community but this isn't the first time we physically met at all this is like the manyth time we, we, have we met, met for the first time in 2018 yeah I, yeah um i actually offered beth posted on her instagram story asking if someone would want to make a lanyard for her for yelk because everyone had the lanyards with yeah, their everyone instagram was names. doing them and i felt left out and and i was like i'm making one right now do you want one and she was like oh my god yeah how much and i was like no no it's fine it's fine good deeds you know and then i uh, turned i was at one of the booths in yelk and i turned around and i just saw a familiar head of hair and i was like book's nest <laughs> and i shouted at her i was like book's nest and you're just like oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we met and we've been friends ever since but yeah i mean we just kind of started chatting online through dms and stuff and that probably i actually left a comment spoke. on some of her oh, posts no, and she up. didn't respond i get a lot of comments and i didn't see it and i'm sorry i go through comments on my posts like at the start of when i post them and then like i try to go back to them but I was being nice, I was engaging and she just ignored me. <laughs> but it's okay, it worked out absolutely fine. And yeah, we've seen each other many times. Since then I've been to Scotland, Lauren's now been here. So yes, it was the start of a beautiful friendship. And so that has been, how many years is that? 18, 19, 20. Four? Yeah, four years. Wow. Four years, yeah. 
Um, so next question, well there's a lot of them, how do we meet, how do we become friends? So the next question is Beth, and I'm going to extend to Lauren, are you writing a book? Um, so I wrote a book in 2019, <laughs> I also wrote one before then for NaNoWriMo and it is shit. Same. Yeah, it's not good, I wrote that uh, 2016, 2017, 2016 is so bad so bad. Everything starts off somewhere though. <laughs> so yeah I wrote a middle grade and I would love to do something with it but I just haven't quite got around to properly editing it yet because that is a big job. So yes I kind of did. Will I ever do anything with it? I don't know. Um, am I writing anything at the moment? No because I work two full-time jobs and it is very busy so I would love to be able to but I'll edit the one I've currently written first. I have written some, well in fact a lot of things, but um <laughs> The one that I really think has some potential I'm currently working on and very very slowly. I'm a Virgo, I'm a perfectionist and I'm a planner not a plotter, well no, so I'm a planner not a pantser. So um, yeah it's going coming along very slowly, I've got two big ideas, I can't quite work out what one's the best one to work on first. So I'm in the process of it but it's going to take a long time. I'm not in any rush to do it but I would like to do it at least before I'm 30. You can do it. can't believe I'm 30 soon, god. Yeah. Favourite part about being a book YouTuber, but, uh, why didn't I say YouTube, a book you, YouTuber? You, you, a book YouTuber or just a content creator? A, a books book to YouTuber. A books, what well, is a booktuber really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. a, book, a favourite part about being a bookish content creator, shall we say? What are your favourite parts? Meeting new people and um, getting to interact with authors and stuff and mm. telling them how much you love their books, like it really makes their day and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And getting to share, like, your interest in books and some other stuff and also I quite even though this isn't book related but I quite enjoy like sharing some stuff that kind of stems off of books so like yeah. if you like to write or if you like to read manga or something like that that's my kind of like thing that I enjoy doing as well. Yeah for me I think it's really similar like it, meeting new people but like having a community of people that like the same things that you do and where you know it's acceptable to go in and say certain things without people just looking at you like what the hell are you going on about like my home friends here are great but in terms of doing this kind of stuff and creating content for books online that's not something they do so it's nice to have people around me that are in that kind of community so I've kind of got two different friendship groups going on in a way and I suppose without the book community there are so many people I talk to daily that I would have never met and it's just so nice to feel at home with it mm -hmm. I think and I really enjoy creating and for me it gives me a space to be able to do that. It's quite it sounds quite dramatic but I'm um, like I don't know where I would be without the book community because yeah it kind of helped me like if it wasn't for bookstagram I wouldn't have the friends that I have I wouldn't have the job that I have I wouldn't have books I wouldn't have been enjoying books as much because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be getting recommendations and stuff so it's literally changed my life <laughs> same yeah same I look at how much I used to like, I've always been a reader but I would you know the, the books I've read and the expanding things I've read about has come from the internet as well and learning more and growing as a reader and it's just yeah it, it's done so much. <laughs> so, Very emotional moment for us. <laughs> 2022 plans, I, I'll have a quick answer to this because I don't really have any yet like obviously I'll just continue as I am and hopefully the world will be a bit more open then so it'd be lovely to go abroad somewhere um, but I don't have anything set as a plan yet just continuing as I am hopefully continuing to grow my content and do lots of good work. Uh, grow content as well. Yeah. Um, YouTube maybe. No. I'm hoping to go abroad as well, but particularly to the US to visit some family and some friends. Uh, come down to London again. Me and my friend want to do like a week in an Airbnb, Yelk. Oh, Yelk. Yes, Yelk yeah. is my 2022 plan. Just the whole. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, hopefully finish writing a draft of a book. Oh yeah, maybe I should add that into mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so next I like this question, although I'm not sure if it's Instagram or YouTube, so we'll go for both, I guess. Yeah. How long did it take you to reach 1k? Love both of your pages. Okay, that implies that it's Instagram, doesn't yeah. it? Um, oh my god, I don't actually remember exactly how long it took me. I remember being stuck at around 1.5 for years. So I think maybe it took me like one to two years to reach that point, and then it took me until it was 2019 that I hit 10k in the May, and then ever since been able to be on a steady incline of growth so I reckon about a year or two. It took longer than I think people expect it mm -hmm. to take. I I think I'm in a unique position because I joined right like at the very start of Bookstagram like back in 2014 Um, so it only took me maybe about three months, mm -hmm. three four months but back then there was barely any Bookstagrammers and it was a very niche thing so you were very easily found so I think that kind of worked in my favour so. 
I wish I knew, I'd I like to be able to find out because I started my account as a New Year's resolution in 2016 and I just don't, I must have. I think it, I posted like, thank you for 3k, thank you for like, yeah, stuff like that back then. then. I must have hit it within the first year actually because if I hit 10k within 2019 I can't have gone from 1k to 10k that fast at that point. If you scroll back in my feed uh, far enough, like right down at the bottom, yeah, there's actually a picture of my bearded dragon, Eco, a little cute picture of him saying like, thank you for 300 followers. Aww. And I'm, I, I think I've kept it. I'm, I wouldn't have delete, deleted it, but I found it a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh, he's so cute. Cute. Okay, this next one. Have you thought about living together? So we kind of no. jokingly... <laughs> <laughs> we kind of jokingly often are like oh you should come and live down here or Lawrence, you should come and live up here don't we because yeah. like I have been to Edinburgh and Glasgow and I think that Scotland's really lovely and Lauren has obviously been down here and has enjoyed this neck of the woods yeah, I would sure. say it's fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been but, good yeah we kind of like jokingly said it but I own my home here this is my flat that I have bought um as Lauren mentioned earlier she's still living at home at the moment and kind of well, you want to stay in the area that you're I in. I don't see myself ever yeah. leaving Scotland. I, I, if I left Scotland, it would be some for somewhere abroad, like outside yeah. of the UK. But I don't see myself leaving yeah. Scotland. Family's there. We've always been there. Mm. It's home. And for me, I've got a nine-year-old sister and I am very, very close to my mum. And it is, I think I would find it quite difficult to not see Ava grow up in the same way that I am at the moment. So I think at the moment, as much as we love spending time together and it's been really nice. like I need of, a break sometimes. <laughs> And it's lovely, lovely living together for like two and a half weeks, but yeah. I think I, I'm at a point in my life where I'm enjoying having my own space almost. I think it, it, it's, it's a nice idea to be like, oh, we'll grow up and we'll live with our friends, mm. but then when you actually grow up, you're like, no, you need your own space. Because as much as I would love, even like uh, living with a friend that I've known since I was four years mm. old, would love to live with her, but like, I need my own space. Yes. So it's, it, it totally is like that. I mean, like I've loved having you here, but like, to sit alone is quite a Can't wait bit... to go and sit in my bed alone. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird. And I don't think I really got that until I moved out because I spent so much time with my family. I really rarely sat in my bedroom. But now, just sitting on my sofa alone is just really lovely and relaxing. Yeah, because, you, like, I mean, you could sit there in, like, the most stupid onesie you can think of and yeah. no one's there to judge you. So basically, as much as we love each other, no. we, we like our alone time, apparently. <laughs> I, one day, hopefully, I will live with somebody. But, yeah, I'm all right with it. And also, I think... To be honest, the biggest thing is I bought this flat, so it wouldn't just be a case yeah. of selling it and going somewhere else. Um, but yeah. So the next question is, which books first got you into reading and what are your earliest memories of reading? I always struggle with this because I have literally always been a reader. So there wasn't like a book where I was like, oh my God, reading is great. But books I remember distinctly as a child, definitely the Magic for Our Way Tree series. Did you read this? No. Oh, it was so good. It was very fantastical, very brilliant. Anything could happen. So I guess that but I've literally always read apparently I memorized Thomas Tank Engine before I could read wow <laughs> so I like memorized the words too because I read it so my mum read it so often before mm -hmm. I could even read what the words said so my whole life and um yeah many early memories of reading um my earliest memories of reading were um like My Secret Unicorn by Linda Chapman uh, the protagonist was actually called Lauren so I felt very special yeah. and uh, so I read all of those books every single one there was su it's such a big series and then uh, there was a book of Uboss graphic novels that I really enjoyed and Sleepovers by Jacqueline Wilson and Best Friends by Jacqueline Wilson those yeah I never read Tracy Beaker but I read those two books religiously mm. like I think I read Sleepovers maybe 14-15 times and then Did you read Vicky Angel I didn't. Uh, and then in primary school, I kind of went through that phase of just not reading anything. Everything was coming out in movies, so I just watched movies. <gasps> and then Borders was closing oh, down. Borders. Borders was closing. R.I.P. Borders. Such um, a good book. It was closing down. Had a sale going on. I walked in, went up to the young adult section, didn't have a clue what that meant, and I saw this book, and I was like, "Wow, the guy on that cover is really hot." So I picked it up, and it turned out it was City of Bones, and alas, I discovered Why? young adult. Yeah. Oh wow, I just dived into, like, I went to loads of urban fantasy when I was younger, like Un London and Triskillian and things like that. Absolutely loved those. I think that was like Tangle wreck. 2011 when I discovered Young oh, Adult. Wow, that was a lot. <gasps> That's 10 years ago. We always got our Fridays in year seven, our last period was English and we got to spend the whole hour reading. And I remember my friend and I were like so happy about that and everyone else was like, oh, I've got to sit and read. I was like, ha, yes, it's my time. We had I golden had time. I would have loved yeah. the reading time. Oh, year seven was um, secondary school. Oh. Yeah. Um, what did you both study at uni? I studied film production at Winchester. 
Um, I studied uh, product design, <laughs> product design and innovation, and then I went on to study graphic design. Favorite memory of the two of you? <laughs> that time when I hit Beth over the head. <laughs> Harsh. I was um, gonna say uh, Edinburgh because that was almost like a little holiday for both of us. I know it's not a holiday for you because you do live in Scotland, but yeah. we were staying in a Airbnb, what was it, a hotel thing. And we were exploring it. It was winter. It was all festive. That was really fun. And it was just before COVID. So it was literally it just was before COVID. Like, COVID wasn't a thing. It, it was, was the just... November and COVID started in December, which yeah. was insane. So that for me, I think was really uh, good. I think the, the most exciting memory I had is when um, it, I think it was the second year we were at Yalk and we knew each other mm -hmm. and you had just won the award for most inspirational. Yeah, that was good. Um, yeah. And I was, was really, lovely. really wanting Beth to get it. I was like, I, I couldn't make the actual award ceremony, but I was like, fingers crossed text and I was like did you get it did you get it and then she said she got it and I was like that's it celebrate any pizza express yeah, we went out for dinner we went for pizza express I remember that I was so, that. yeah that, that was, was that was really that whole thing was really good for I me. think the excitement that got me because I when I found out she got it I was like <laughs> yeah that was, that was really good like that like that whole yeah weekend was fab yeah um what else have I got there's so many I don't think I'm gonna have a chance to get through them all but we'll kind of just pick out a couple I've got one here that says who's your favorite Scottish person Beth Amy. Amy from Magically Bookish. I don't have a favourite Scottish person. I she loved does. all Scottish people, but no, I, I I, made Lauren a sign and I picked her up from the airport and at the bottom says my favourite Scottish person. And I was going to put in brackets, our friend Amy, I was going to put, and Amy. And I just didn't for some reason. And now I really regret it and feel bad. She feels like, <laughs> what is it, chopped liver or something like that, she said. Oops. Um, I've got a question here, how to get arcs. We've spoken about this before, I think, on Instagram Lives. So there's probably like saved lives there to go and have a look at. It's but... probably worth mentioning that if you want advice about arcs and like how to grow and stuff, the best place to get these things is to check our Instagram Lives yeah. because we go into immense detail. Yeah. Like, take notes. Yeah, arcs, I would say it's a case of presenting yourself in a way that like you've kind of giving yourself a portfolio almost and showing the platforms that you have where you want to talk about the art, contacting the publishers, trying to get the correct contact, talk to friends and get that contact if you can, or it'll be on a website or social media. And then just send an email that, well, we could go into this for a long time, but we're trying to make these snappier, but like send a polite email that gives as much information as possible, including your address. It just makes it really easy, but like just be polite because I think that goes a long way rather than just saying, Give me this book. Give yeah, demanding books. it will get you nothing. Yeah, just so. And also, it's probably worth mentioning, including as much information as you possibly can, like your address. Yeah. Because sometimes you would send the email and you won't get a response, but that doesn't mean yeah. they've not got it, they've Definitely. saved it somewhere. Yeah. So when you're emailing about an ARC, include all the information you possibly can, address, yeah. stats, like Beth said. Yeah. And then if you don't get a response, don't be disheartened. You might wake up one day and find a book at your door. Yeah. Previous reviews from the same author would always go down well. Like, if you're really passionate about a book, don't think that it matters how many followers you've got. If you care and you're passionate, go for it. Mm -hmm. Your favourite bookshop? That's a hard question to do on the spot. It's actually really easy for me because I'm very limited off with that. Well, all the ones down here as well. Though. Yeah, I, I mean, if I had to choose my favourite from down here, I would probably say Toppings. Um, but uh, in Scotland, what, like in Glasgow at least, we don't have like a toppings or anything like that we need to go through to Edinburgh so I would have to say Waterstones in Glasgow yeah biggest Waterstones in Scotland just good Waterstones might there. I add I would say the toppings or Mr B's in Bath they're both just so so good that's so. the most toppings I was thinking of yeah oh okay just a couple more what is your biggest achievement in life so far <laughs> do you want me to go first yeah okay um for me I think it's winning book influencer of the year 2021 <laughs> yeah, you can which, just see it. <laughs> which literally just happened last month, but I words cannot describe how I feel about that. Again, thank you to everyone who made that possible, but I can't believe I actually did that. That blew my mind, meant so much for me, and is definitely going to be something I remember as being a massive achievement. Mm. Um, I would probably have to say winning most inspirational for UK YBA. Um, because I mean I've won other stuff in the past but like that's something I worked towards mm. so it's the one I feel more achieved by and I actually cried when they everyone get brought on to say like thank you and stuff like, and I was the only one who was like thank you <laughs> like I, th I think you could have seen how much it meant to me yeah you can yeah definitely. <laughs> you can definitely see it was yeah watching that happen was like, <laughs> that was an online event as well I know so, but that was amazing still on YouTube if you want to see me cry <laughs> I'll just go for a couple more what book do you disagree on 
like don't like or disagree I suppose in that I like it and you don't or you like it and I don't there's one that comes to mind for me um actually it's two Okay, so there's one I, I don't think I've necessarily disagreed with you because Beth has good recommendations. She knows what I like. So as does Lauren have excellent recommendations. But I know there's a book that Beth has read and given like three stars that I absolutely hated. No offense, sorry, but I hated Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. Did not like it. Could like, I, it, hate is a strong word, but like I really, really disagree with like basically what happened in the story there. And I know you gave it three stars, so that's the closest but I thing. I can't I, even remember it. I so like, I wouldn't even say we disagree on that because I wouldn't be like, oh. Oh my god! I would say two that we disagree on is the hating game, which I didn't oh, like, right, yeah. and Lauren really enjoyed. I, love the game. I just didn't like. I found it creepy. I found the main character very, very wrong, and I just really disliked him a lot. You make it sound as if I've got a really strange taste <laughs> in men. He's so arrogant. And I don't like arrogant men, and that's the second book that we disagree on is Mortal Instruments. Yeah. I hate. Okay, all right, Jace. Yeah. I hate Jace. We know this. We know I hate. You. Don't eat, like. We're just not. We're gonna. Wait, 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 wait. You don't, she, <laughs> she doesn't like well hair and deal either. I, I don't. Re I, I don't. He isn't on Jace's level, but they're both incredibly arrogant, and I hate that about them. So that's our disagreeing thing. But to end it on a positive from my questions, do you have any more questions actually that we've not got through to? Because I know we've seen kind of like mixes of the same kind of questions. No, it's pretty much the same one. I mean, I asked who's your favorite Scottish person, your favorite book of all time. Uh, I don't know anymore. Because I used to say Shadow of the Wind, and I reread that recently, and whilst I still loved it, I don't know if it's going to sit as a favourite book of all time. I love The Poppy War. I absolutely love that. I've read that twice, and thought it was fantastic. So, maybe maybe it's The Poppy War now. I struggle with this as well, because whilst I say The Bone Season is like my favourite, I wouldn't say The Bone Season is necessarily my favourite book of all time. It's my favourite series of all time, like mm -hmm. absolutely as a whole. However, The Mask Fallen is up there for one of my yeah. favourite books. The fourth book that's just came out for it, it's really one of my favourite books ever now. Um, my most recent edition, I would just say, is like for one of my favourite books of all time, is Midnight in Everwood. This one, it comes out literally next week, yeah, actually. Yeah, it's so pretty. This is the special UK hardback edition arc that was sent to us last year. And, oh, it's so good. It's yeah. a nutcracker retelling. Perfect for Christmas. Almost. I sobbed, but not because it's sad. It just, it was so magical. It literally made me cry. And honestly, per perfect Christmas read. Perfect. So, so good. I'm reading it again this year and I don't reread books lately. So, get it. Around the time that Lauren was reading it, so I finished it first and Lauren's reading it and I was also reading One by One, which I would say is a favourite thriller book. Not oh. a favourite book of all time, but a favourite thriller. Also, if we're talking about new ad additions to it, Dangerous Remedy, has, the series has got Ooh. to be up there for me. That is fantastic. I um, just bought that. You did? Should we round up with one last question? Yeah. Oh, there's so many that I want to be able to answer. I need to just, go home. Yeah, I can't get to them all. I think this is a nice one to end it on. Okay. What's your favourite thing about your friendship? It also says congrats about 10k. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. What's I your favourite thing about our friendship? I'm, I'm trying to kind of put them in order and what's the best <laughs> part. So yeah, you go first. So if I was naming literally one thing, I think it's the fact that Lauren is literally just constantly there for me and I can message her any time of day and I know she's there and she and understands <laughs> and I she understands like that is like I have many different types of friends that like offer many different things if that makes sense like you know you always have certain friends you go to for certain things and Lauren is just kind of there for everything is there to listen she'll understand I could say anything to her and I don't think she would be like what are you going on about I could be very honest with her and I think that's not often something I would come across like that it's just I think I'm just lucky to have found that kind of friendship because I don't think that's something you necessarily always come across yeah. and so yeah uh, that's my favorite thing about our friendship just the kind of the companionship that I find in it really yeah I would say pretty much the same that the fact that I'll I can my uh, no, <laughs> okay like I'm saying <laughs> um I, I can pretty much go to Beth about absolutely anything example I called her once at three o'clock in the morning Beth is a night out like not a night out sorry oh, she goes she goes to bed at a very decent time and stuff like that but I'm like I'll stay out late yeah but like yeah she goes to bed at a mature time I love right? 12 -ish. and um like there was something happened recently and I needed her at like three o'clock in the morning I was really really upset and I called her and she picked up immediately and she was there for me for like two hours so like yeah that like I can come to her about absolutely anything mm -hmm. um I can talk to you about absolutely anything because yeah. you understand as you said but I think I think one of the things that I enjoy most is the fact that we are so different mm -hmm. and so everything is an interesting conversation and yeah. there's never a boring moment like I could literally be sitting there in the chair and just be like 
chocolate and we'd have like a massive <laughs> in interesting conversation about like chocolate or something like that so yeah. I think that's pretty good and then also reliable as hell like I could tell this girl like my deepest darkest secret I could tell her that I don't know I've went and killed someone and she would be like okay shit please don't tell me that that'll come in a very bad situation <laughs> yeah I think it's like there's no judgment like we're, we're we're different but yet we're so similar in the way that we react to things yeah i think like things we like and think the way we act are different but the way we react to things or like form opinions on things yeah. can be quite similar yeah but i think that yeah there's no judgment like i am clean i have ocd about germs lauren is aware of both those things about me and i am aware that probably staying in my flat hasn't been like a complete not stress for I, I just I have ways I like there has been because... similar things though that you do that I do because yeah. I also go OCD yeah but like <laughs> I like I like things in a certain way because of the way that I see germs and stuff yeah. and I feel like anyone else I'd say that to and they'd be like all right you weirdo but I can tell that to Lauren as much as I know I'm gonna sound in my head really pedantic I can just say it to you and you'll be like okay I respect that I will do that because it's your home yeah, and I like that because I feel bad saying those it's things. It's funny though because we were actually diagnosed with OCD pretty much at the same time in our lives. So, like mm -hmm. you were 11, 12, I was, I was 14. All oh, right, you were 14. Yeah. Okay, but I was like 13. Um, and a, I have OCD as well that I was diagnosed with and I can turn around to Beth and say I've got this new OCD thing and stuff like that and she's like, she'll talk me through it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, it, we can help each other because we've had like various different experiences. So yeah. Anyway. OCD besties! Yay! Oh wait, what? That what that was for? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's our Q&A. As we said, we wanted to get to a couple more questions, but we have to leave now to get to the airport. I need to go home to Scotland. Scotland misses yeah. me. So it's been lovely having Lauren here. If you have enjoyed this video, too, do please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you've got any more questions and we will maybe try and do an Instagram live with the ones that we haven't been able to get to, but we try to answer as many as possible. So like I said, if you want tips, Instagram yeah. lives are the place. Not, I mean, yes, best YouTube is a place to come, but like if you want details, yeah, come to the lives. I've also got a blog that I never really talk about anymore that yeah. has all this stuff on it too, so it's all linked down below. As is my Patreon, lots of exciting things there too. Subscribe to more of my face on your feed. Lauren is now going to be going home, so she might. I don't know when this is going live, but she, you might see her in one further video. I, I don't know, but it's been lovely having her come to stay. I hope you've enjoyed watching her content within my content. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, stay positive. And don't do bad things. I'll say that next time on another video. Bye!